Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow. Well, first, Edzo, I used to look like you. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I am looking forward. We're not just going to have a great partnership. We're going to do some great work together. You're going to be a great General Secretary Treasurer and national leader, not only in this IAFF, but in the labor movement across North America. I am so looking forward to the work we're going to do together. Congratulate you on your election as General Secretary Treasurer of the IFF. John, thank you so much, my brother, for that nomination. It means so much uh, to have my local here and to sit with it. I know I'll probably get in trouble. I can't name all 10, but I have to certainly recognize Ron Cooley, my brother and friend who's done so much to help me along the way. And, and Tom Simcoe, which most of you don't personally know, sitting at that table, part of our local, part of the early days, 43 years ago, a young member of a young local helped me every step of the way. Tom, so great to see you and the support you've given me. And Mike, thank you for that second. I'm so privileged to have you do so, and the same, Frank, with you. I guess uh, what I want to say, and I talk to you, obviously, I can get a privilege of doing that in so many forums over so many years. But I do want to spend a, a moment kind of about my journey, because many of you may not know it. I wasn't as privileged as Eddie Kelly. Uh, I didn't come from a firefighter family. Uh, I didn't really know what that profession was all about. I came uh, from the projects, Washington, D.C., right across the river, South Arlington. I was raised by a single mom who some of you knew, tough old Scott. I lost her a few years ago. And it was uh, a time when I was growing up and, quite frankly, heading down a wrong path. And it was a friend of hers from the fire service in Fairfax County that really gave me my chance to understand what all of this that we all do is about. I got a chance to live in the firehouse. Call me a buff, call me whatever you want. When I was 16 years old, to be able to finish out high school. And I got to sit with all of you at that kitchen table. And I got to sleep in the bunk room. It was an incredible opportunity, and it gave my mom a, a real break. I knew what I wanted to do at that moment, and that is just somehow I wanted to get on the job. I, some of you know that I've said that, you know, you had to do two things back then. You had to be 20 years old, and you had to have a high school education. I knew I could do the first thing. But the uh, second requirement, there was some challenges and struggle, but I made it through. And I held my union card at uh, Giant Food, uh, retail clerks, they were known at that time, for an 18-month period until I tested and went on the job in Fairfax County on August 1st, 1966, 50 years ago. I never thought I'd do anything else. All I wanted to do was ride a rig, started on an engine and then got moved over to uh, a teller, and I just thought it was the greatest job in the world. I didn't know anything about the IAFF. I decided I wanted to make a difference, and part of my story that most of you don't know, and at 23 years old, I ran for the retirement board of our county, where 
The retirement plan was just one plan for all the workers. There was no fire and police plan. And we did our work on that board, and uh, I guess uh, I started realizing maybe I had some capability. The long and the short of it is we separated out and created the plan that now provides benefits to the firefighters in Fairfax County. And that was 1969, 23 years old. And that group of us that John mentioned, uh, yeah, we used to sneak through the backyards and meet in the basement of members, including Sonny Nelson, a name that only a couple of you would know, down in Mount Vernon to, to begin the organizing campaign because we started to realize that this is where we needed to be. We needed to be in the house of the IAFF. We needed to un start understanding the power of this union and the unity that comes with it and how you can accomplish so much uh, on behalf of your members. At local in July of 1971, only about uh, a little less than 600 on the job then, now proudly 1,800. And it began my journey and my understanding of the incredible power that this union uh, brings with it. Uh, this uh, June 1st, I celebrated my 40th year at the IFF, following that local presidency and serving as president in uh, the state of Virginia and then be asked to come over to the IAFF. Uh, it was a journey I could have never dreamed of. And then leading up to um, August of 2000, when I uh, was blessed and you honored me with being elected as the general president of our incredible union. Along the way, I uh, realized that this work can take a lot away from your family. My son, Michael, I think honestly suffered by my commitment to uh, my IFF family. I had um, some uh, marriages that didn't work, and I'm not going to totally blame this work, but I think many of you know that it can take its toll. We make our choices, and I'm not saying it's always the right choice, but my choice has always been this union. This is my family in, in so, many, so many ways, and, and it is my life. For the last uh, 14 years, though, I have been uh, honored and so blessed that someone came into my life that really gave me the, uh, the strength I needed to persevere sometimes when things got uh, kind of shitty, and also hold me down and keep me grounded when maybe uh, I got flying a little too high. Uh, she's been with me uh, all, every step of the way for just 14 years, and I can say that for so many of you that have met her, I've never met anyone that never has a bad thing to say about anyone. Someone who is uh, so supportive, is a great friend, and she's my best friend. And she's my lover. She's my life partner. Uh, she's now my fiance. And I couldn't have done what I've been doing all these years without her. And that's Karen Pfeiffer. Sweetheart, thank you for everything you've allowed me to do. And I know I'll get in trouble if I kind of go down a list, but I, I, I've got to, uh, you know, these people that really make what I do possible. Uh, she's not here, but the role of uh, my executive assistant is so critically important. Many of you may have remember, but uh, 
my first exec was Chris Dennis. And for 28 years, she, you know, stood by me and uh, helped me uh, this, with this journey and, and uh, was so loyal. And again, another one that just kind of helped keep me steady. And for the last uh, eight years, uh, Teresa Valenzuela, my exec, they really uh, provide me, they hold me down, they push me forward, they give me hell, and uh, I couldn't do this job without the two of them having been along on this journey with me, and I thank them for everything they've allowed me to do. You know, I, I'm trying not to crank it up. I did that Monday, and I'm not going to do that now. And, and Edzo, I always told him, the first time I ever met him, I said, man, you got the chops. You, you got, you're, you're going to be going places. But let me just say that this union of ours is incredibly strong. And the unity among us is, I think, unlike any other profession in the land. It's not just the unity that comes under the imprimatur or the IAFF, it's the unity that comes out of our profession, out of our firefighter family. The unity that comes out of us, you know, in the bunk rooms together, at the kitchen table together, hitting those rigs together, having each other's lives in each other's hands when the job is tough, and then standing strong together to take on the forces and the voices and those with the power and the influence that sometimes wants to take it out on our members and their families. This is all of what we're supposed to do and what we've been doing. This is all why we do take that oath and swear that we will use our God-given talents to make a difference, to contribute to the lives and livelihoods of the men and women of the IAFF. I know I've said at your state and provincials, I know I've said at the caucuses this week, I know I'm not a very funny guy. I like my cocktails, but I'm not really the best guy in the bar because my anecdotal stories aren't very intriguing. My social skills, I've said, are a little challenged, and most of you have developed much stronger social skills. But what I am always about is this union. I'm dead serious about the work of this IAFF. I know the difference that we all make. I know the accomplishments that we're able to, to uh, enjoy and the battles that we have to take on. This is what makes my engine go. I get up every morning and my engine is running strong. All I think about is, what do we accomplish today? Where's the next idea? Where's the next innovative approach? Where's the next new enterprise? People don't like me to use that word because we're union, but enterprises that makes a difference in our members' lives. Where's the next function that's going to keep them healthy, keep them on the job, let them enjoy that retirement in the end? That's what I do every single day. I do it with an incredible executive board. I do it with an incredible partner right now, my brother for over 40 years, Tom Miller, who will be celebrating not only this week, but tomorrow night. I'm going to do it with my new partner. But this is who I am. I'm so blessed that you've given me this opportunity again. I don't take lightly the confidence you place in me. I don't take for granted that, you know, I'm allowed to stand up here today acclaimed for the fifth time. What I will commit to you is that I'm going to keep pushing this union, and I'm going to keep innovating for this union. 
And I'm going to work with an incredible team to make sure that this thing never goes on neutral. We don't put it on the treadmill because it's running pretty good. We're going to always look to make it run faster and stronger and longer. We're going to do our work for the very, very best, the 302,000 of the very best, the sisters and brothers of this IAFF. And as I said in the year 2000 at the end of my remarks, and I'll say it to you again today, I said you'd always know where you can find me because I'll be taking care of business. And Edzo, come up here because that's exactly what we're going to do together. For all of you, for all of our members, for departments all across North America, we are going to be taking care of business.